So next let me discuss about the phenytoin. So phenytoin it is an oral anti-epileptic drug right it is an oral anti-epileptic drug and we have a prodrug of this particular phenytoin which is called phosphenytoin right which is called phosphenytoin remember phosphenytoin it is a water soluble right it is a water soluble prodrug right remember this phosphenytoin is a water soluble prodrug of phenytoin and you take phenytoin the route of administration is oral whereas you take phosphenytoin the route of administration of this drug is intravenous or intramuscular route of administration and where is this used this phosphenytoin remember whenever we give either intravenously or intramuscularly this is useful for the treatment of acute attack of seizures in case of status epilepticus right is used in acute attacks of seizures in status epilepticus all right in status epilepticus now what is the mechanism of action of these particular drugs remember these drugs they act by blocking right these act by blocking the sodium channels right they act by blocking the sodium channels now where do we use this particular phenytoin this phenytoin we use this in case of gtcs generalized tonic clonic seizures and as well as this is also used in case of the partial seizures right also used in the treatment of the partial seizures all right the other uses of this particular phenytoin is it can also be used as the anti arrhythmic drug right it can also be used as the anti arrhythmic drug and like we have various classes of the anti arrhythmic drugs class 1 2 3 4 and as well as 5 and class 1 anti arrhythmic drugs are again subclassified into class 1a 1b and as well as 1c if you take this phenytoin which is having the anti arrhythmic property it is class 1b anti arrhythmic property right it is having class 1b anti arrhythmic property that means by blocking the sodium channels and this particular anti arrhythmic property of the phenytoin it is used in case of digitalis induced arrhythmias so in case of digitalis induced arrhythmias we give this particular phenytoin and this is class 1b anti arrhythmic drug now recently it has been found to enhance or increase the wound healing right the other use is it will enhance the wound healing this is another use of this particular phenytoin all right next now this phenytoin it follows saturation kinetics right it follows what is called as saturation kinetics right now what is this saturation kinetics is the pharmacokinetic property of the phenytoin initially it will be the first order kinetics it will follow what is called the first order kinetics now what do you mean by the saturation kinetics is this particular kinetics they change kinetics changes from first order to the zero order kinetics all right the kinetics it changes from the first order to the zero order kinetics right within the therapeutic concentration now and now let me discuss what will happen if the individual is having the phenytoin toxicity right what will happen if the individual is having phenytoin toxicity now remember at toxic doses right at toxic doses the phenytoin 
it can result in cerebellar symptoms. Right, it can result in cerebellar symptoms. Now, what do you think will be the cerebellar symptoms? Cerebellar symptoms, they include ataxia. Ataxia is what? Imbalance in the gait. Ataxia is one of the cerebellar symptoms. And the other one is vertigo. Next is nystagmus. Right, so these are some of the cerebellar symptoms, right? So at toxic levels, remember the phenytoin will cause the cerebellar symptoms like ataxia, vertigo, nystagmus and as well as diplopia. Now, now remember whenever you are giving phosphonatoin, phosphonatoin I have said you, it can be given intravenously or intramuscularly. So whenever you are giving phosphonatoin, you have to give by slow IV infusion. Right, you have to give it by slow IV infusion. Why? Because when you give this phenytoin very fastly, remember the fast administration of the phenytoin at very high doses that can lead to arrhythmia, cardiovascular collapse and coma. Remember this point. So phenytoin, it should always be given in the form of slow IV infusion because the fast administration of high doses can lead to arrhythmia, cardiovascular collapse and as well as coma. Alright, next. When we use this phenytoin chronically, remember the chronic use of phenytoin can result in what is called as gingival hyperplasia or gum hypertrophy. Right, will result in gingival hyperplasia or gum hypertrophy. Now, why is this gum hypertrophy or gingival hyperplasia due to? Remember, this gingival hyperplasia or gum hypertrophy, it results due to overexpression of the platelet derived growth factor. Right? So, this is due to overexpression of platelet derived growth factor. So, due to overexpression of this particular uh, Platelet derived growth factor, the individual will develop gingival hyperplasia or gum hypertrophy. Now, this particular gum hypertrophy or gingival hyperplasia will regress after the discontinuation of phenytoin. Right? So, this gum hypertrophy will regress after discontinuation of phenytoin. Right after the discontinuation of the phenytoin, the gum hypertrophy or gingival hyperplasia will be regressed. Now, apart from this particular gum hypertrophy, remember the other adverse effects of the phenytoin. The other adverse effects of the phenytoin, it will cause hirsutism, that is excessive growth of the body hair. So, hirsutism is another adverse effect with the phenytoin. Coarsening of facial features right coarsening of the facial features is another important adverse effects with the phenytoin and these individuals they develop megaloblastic anemia right these individuals they develop megaloblastic anemia and the phenytoin induced megaloblastic anemia, this should be treated with folic acid. Right, phenytoin induced megaloblastic anemia should be treated with the folic acid. Alright, and the other adverse effects with the phenytoin is, this phenytoin, it will also cause vitamin D deficiency. Because this phenytoin will cause vitamin D deficiency, the individual will land up in either rickets or osteomalacia or osteomalacia and the other adverse effects is it will also cause vitamin k deficiency and that will result in the coagulation abnormalities within the individual and this drug will also cause hyperglycemia that is increase in the blood glucose levels now how it will cause hyperglycemia is remember phenytoin will inhibit the insulin release so hyperglycemia is due to 
right it is due to decrease in the insulin release right so due to decrease in the insulin release this phenytoin will cause this hyperglycemia now the other important point is you take this particular phenytoin phenytoin it it has what is called as teratogenicity so when phenytoin is taken in a pregnant mother this will have the teratogenic effect now what is the teratogenic effect of this particular phenytoin is the phenytoin will cause what is called as the fetal hydantoin syndrome fetal hydantoin syndrome that is the teratogenic effect of the phenytoin in the fetus now what does this fetal hydantoin syndrome it includes is this fetal hydantoin syndrome it includes the hypoplastic phalanges that is the fingers they will be hypoplastic the fetal hydantoin syndrome it includes the cleft lip the cleft palate and as well as microcephaly and as well as microcephaly so these are the components of the fetal hydantoin syndrome so let me shortly summarize or revise about the entire phenytoin so phenytoin is an anti epileptic drug which is given in the form of oral administration we have a prodrug of the phenytoin which is phosphenytoin which is a water soluble prodrug and the route of administration of this phosphenytoin is either intravenous or intramuscular route and where do we use this phosphenytoin via intravenous route is in case of acute attacks of seizures in case of status epilepticus we use this phosphenytoin via intravenous route and whenever you are giving phosphenytoin in via intravenous route that has to be given via by slow iv infusion because the faster administration of a very high dose will result in arrhythmia and as well as the cardiovascular collapse and the mechanism of action of this phenytoin is by blocking the sodium channels the sodium entry into the neuronal cells will not occur and thereby the excitation of the neuronal cells will not occur and thereby the epilepsy will be reduced and where all will we use this phenytoin this phenytoin it is used in gtcs generalized tonic clonic epilepsy partial seizures and not only that this phenytoin it is also having the anti arrhythmic property it is used as the class 1b anti arrhythmic drug and recently this phenytoin has been found to enhance the wound healing and not only that in digitalis induced arrhythmia phenytoin can be given now you take this phenytoin it follows the saturation kinetics in the sense initially it is metabolized by first order kinetics followed by that the zero order kinetics and whenever you give this phenytoin at toxic doses it will cause cerebellar symptoms like ataxia vertigo nystagmus and as well as diplopia and whenever you use this phenytoin chronically the chronic use of phenytoin will result in what is called as gum hypertrophy and this particular gum hypertrophy is due to over expression of the platelet derived growth factor and this gum hypertrophy it will regress after the discontinuation of the phenytoin and this phenytoin will also cause vitamin d deficiency and vitamin k deficiency so vitamin d deficiency will result in rickets or osteomalacia and vitamin k deficiency will result in the coagulation abnormalities and this phenytoin will also cause hyperglycemia due to decrease in the insulin release and the other adverse effects with the phenytoin is it will cause excessive growth of the body hair which is called as hirsutism and it will also cause coarsening of the facial features and it will also cause megaloblastic anemia the megaloblastic anemia which is caused by the phenytoin should be treated with the folic acid and this phenytoin it also has the teratogenic effect in a pregnant mother if phenytoin is given the uh, fetus will develop what is called as fetal hydantoin syndrome which includes the hypoplastic phalanges cleft lip cleft palate and as well as microcephaly so this is completely about your phenytoin so as we have many adverse effects with the phenytoin and it is difficult to remember these many adverse effects so i'll give you all these adverse effects of phenytoin in the form of a mnemonic right so the adverse effects of phenytoin right the adverse effects of the phenytoin so the mnemonic is h o t hot 
M A L I K A that is hot malika right so what does this H stands for remember the word H stands for hirsutism or hypertrophy of the gums that is due to and hypertrophy of the gums is due to exaggerated expression of the PDGF platelet derived growth factor and O stands for osteomalacia that is due to vitamin D deficiency T stands for teratogenicity that is fetal hydantoin syndrome which includes the hypoplastic phalanges microcephaly cleft palate and then cleft lip and then we have megaloblastic anemia that can occur because of the phenytoin usage for long term and this should be treated with the folic acid and toxic doses of the phenytoin will result in the cellular symptoms like ataxia and as well as nystagmus vertigo and diplopia and L stands for lymphadenopathy phenytoin will also cause lymphadenopathy next the word I stands for the phenytoin will inhibit the insulin release and thereby the individual will land up in what is called as hyperglycemia the K stands for phenytoin will cause the vitamin K deficiency and the word A stands for arrhythmias so this particular phosphonatoin if it is used or if it is administered fastly in higher doses that will result in arrhythmias and as well as cardiovascular collapse so these are the adverse effects of phenytoin